In this video, I would like to give a brief review of the statistical methods I learned from my MIT course, Data and Analysis for Social Scientists. This course was taught by Esther and Sarah. Esther got really famous after she won the Nobel Prize in 2019. Exploratory data analysis is an approach to analyze data sets to summarize their main characteristics, often with the visual methods. Histogram is commonly used. It displays the shape and the spread of continuous sample data. Kernel density estimation was something new to me. In statistics, kernel density estimation is a non-parametric way to estimate the probability density function of a random variable. It is a fundamental data smoothing problem where inferences about the population are made based on a finite data sample. Another thing new to me is plotting the cumulative probability function against each other when comparing sample data from two populations. This is different from PP plot or QQ plot. A box and whisker plot is a way of summarizing a set of data measured on an interval scale. It is used to show the shape of the distribution, its central value, and its variability. I think most people are familiar with joint density function, but I never think about using histogram of joint density to categorize the probability distribution of two random variables. The reason why we could use the sample mean to estimate the population mean is because of the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem tells us no matter what the distribution of the population is, the shape of the sampling distribution will approach normality as the sample size increases. Bias, variance, consistency are the most important reasons for choosing an estimator, but we also consider how easy the estimator it is to compute, how robust it is to assumptions we made. Uh, whether the estimator will still do a decent job if we have assumed the wrong distribution. Maximum likelihood estimation is the technique which helps us in determining the parameters of the distribution that best describe the given data. MLE is very popular. Although it can be biased, it is consistent under standard conditions. In addition, it is asymptotically efficient. So at least for large samples, the MLE is likely to do as well or better as any other estimator you may cook up. Confidence intervals provide us with an upper and lower limit around our sample mean. And within this interval, we can then be confident we have captured the population mean. Notice here we are getting a confidence interval for the population mean. So if you assume a population distribution and would like to estimate the parameter, you would need the skills from the MIT statistic course. To prove that a hypothesis is true or false with absolute certainty, we would need absolute knowledge. That is, we would have to examine the entire population. Indeed, hypothesis testing concerns on how to use a random sample to judge if it is evidence that supports or not the hypothesis. Note that failure to reject HO does not mean the hypothesis, no hypothesis is true. There is no formal outcome that says accept HO. It only means that we do not have sufficient evidence to support H1. The hypothesis we want to test is if H1 is likely true. Randomized controlled trials are prospective studies that measure the effectiveness of a new intervention or treatment. Although no study is likely on its own to prove causality, randomization 
reduces bias and provides a rigorous tool to examine cause-effect relationships between an intervention and outcome. With Fisher, we are taking a slight detour from the statistic we have been doing so far. We are now not going to assume that the uncertainty in our data comes from the fact that we have a sample drawn from a population. If we have the entire population, the uncertainty comes from the missing data. Each individual is either treated or controlled, but not both. And since everybody has a different potential outcome pairs, for each drawer that lectures give us, we would give a slightly different answer. With big data, this is the right way to think about this. Imagine running an experiment on Facebook or using Swedish data. This is a relevant question.